Okay, fire, let's go. You ready? Let's Boom. do this. Episode 13. Mm-mm. Episode 13, we got another coffee in the house. What are we drinking today? Balzacs. Balzac. That sounds that weird. Sounds, that uh, sounds weird, man. weird, but it tastes good. <laughs> A dark affair. I told you guys, we like dark roast, so went for this guy. A new coffee, not bad. And also, Farad was judging me because today is the first day we're not actually fasting on the podcast because we didn't eat anything last night. So I actually added some milk. Farad's still going for black. Oat milk latte. Oat milk, baby. Let's go. But I didn't have time to foam it. We were kind of running late. But this is the coffee for today. Let us know in the comments if any of you guys are actually drinking coffee with us or not. We've never asked. No one's ever said anything. No, not really, actually. We should, we should see that if people are drinking coffee while listening to this podcast at the same they time. They should. Yeah. They should. I mean, it should become like a thing. Like everybody has to gla- grab like a mug or a glass or whatever, cup of coffee, whatever you got, just to drink. If you don't want coffee, tea, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just chill because today... Farhad, we are having a very special guest. We always say it. We always say it because every guest we bring on is special. Every guest we bring, we try to always give you guys the most value. And today The best we're, of the best. Usually we always look for the best of the best in every go. single industry. There you go. And when you said every single industry, that's because every single time we try to shake it up a little bit. Sometimes we're going down the augmented reality lane. Sometimes last week at least it was about virtual production with unreal engine we had the guy who's been creating all the production and, and and the virtual experiences for tomorrowland one of our most favorite festival but today if you're ready farad shall we let's go okay so today we have one of the masters of social media this guy has managed to time and time again garner hundreds of thousands of followers but not just any kind of followers engage communities from around the world for the things that he works on and He is here today to talk about his creation process. We want to break down his formula for success over many different platforms. And not just that, his content also happens to be something very special. In a world today where the news media and the news channels are always covering negative shit and they're all being politically correct and they're talking about politics most of the time, there's only a handful of people that are actually covering emerging tech covering artificial intelligence, covering what is actually fucking happening in the world. So there's only these people that we can thank and look forward to every single day to cover what is actually happening in the world. And me and Farah do that, especially now that, you know, we're working with all these different techs in the world. There's a couple of pages that we look to, and this guy happens to be one of those guys who is constantly and consistently putting up good fucking content that we can look forward to every day. Joseph, welcome to the show. Hey, Joseph, how's it going? I'm good. Wow, that was that was an incredible introduction, and I, I must say, I am now really in the mood for some coffee. So after this interview, I definitely- <laughs> hey, do you, do you want some Balzac? <laughs> so I, I was gonna I was gonna offer it to you, but I was like that kind of rude, so I'm not gonna do it today. <laughs> oh yeah, I would lo- definitely love some Balzac coffee. Um, but you know, that was a, I really appreciate that. You know, happy to be on the show. I, I I actually love to take interviews. I used to get them a lot more often these offers, but. Uh, you know, ever since I've been he- kind of heads down building, I kind of haven't really had the time to do that. But, uh, you know, when you guys reached out, I think that it was a it was a no brainer for me. Obviously, yes, you guys are awesome. And I'm excited for the show. Yeah. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you saying that. We we love what you do and what you put out every day. And for everybody watching, we're going to be putting all the socials of Joseph in the description. So if you guys are curious as to what he does, if you haven't seen what he does, go and check him out. He's like all over social media. Every single social media, you can find him. There you go. And like, there's no way you can miss this guy's face. Like it's going to be everywhere. And I before we jump into anything serious... You fucking made us jealous. You were right beside Elon Musk a couple of days ago, posted a photo for him, big smile on your face. <laughs> Tell us what happened, man. We like, How was yeah, that interaction? It, no, I, the first image, it was like he was sitting far from the stage where Elon was speaking. I, I think it was half an hour later that he took a selfie. And it was, right like, beside yeah. Elon. We were like, oh, shit, man. We wish you were there. How was it? What, what actually happened? So, yeah, that's a great question. So, I, um, you know, funny enough, I had... I had basically, you know, I, I, I learned about this conference. My father texts me. He says, yo, there's this conference taking place in Miami. Let's go. Right. So mm. um, I'm able to get I'm able to, you know, email some people, get some tickets for us. And um, when I when I get there, you know, I had showed up just for Elon that day. Right. I had a lot of stuff mm. to do in the morning. And Elon was speaking at around 1230, made sure to be there for Elon. Um, and, you know, when Elon was speaking, it was a packed room. We're talking about thousands of people in the room. Um, but I knew that I wanted to take a selfie with him. I knew that I wanted to just talk to him, more specifically, shake his hand. Um, he he gave a great speech. You know, the room was full of people that are, you know, they deal with marketing. 
Um, and mm -hmm. obviously Elon Musk is now, he has to appease to these people because Elon Musk, he, he owns Twitter now and mm -hmm. they are the people that are going to pretty much make Twitter successful. And uh, a lot of people don't necessarily like Elon because of obviously he's got somewhat of a bad reputation in, uh, in certain circles, right, in tech because of his, you know, clearly outlandishly, you know, his speech is not necessarily filtered. Let's just say that. Um, and... <laughs> what? No, no. I mean, okay, just <laughs> disclaimer, we are big fans of Elon Musk, so I don't know how this yeah, conversation is going to go. We're probably going to be very biased as to whatever conversation that comes up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but but please continue. Yeah, no, I love Elon. So, um, so he's in this room. He's giving a killer speech, right? And I'm just like loving it. I was absolutely, I was absolutely obsessed. And live mm -hmm. while he's speaking, I actually was reporting on Twitter, you know, giving us, giving the live updates of what was taking place, uh, taking videos. And then it, it had come to a certain point after 30 minutes of speaking, they had asked if anybody wanted to, to ask a question. So my heart immediately started beating. And I was like, you know, I, 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 as much, by the way, just putting that out there, as easy it is for me, you know, as easy as it, is, as it is for me to make videos online, it is extremely hard for me to speak publicly, right? I mean, I just had a video that went up. I have over, when you when you combine it between TikTok and Instagram, it's like it has over 1.5 million views. And I'm still, to speak to a room full of 100 people makes me like freaking butterfly it's very shaking. Different it's very different things. It's very different things. You yeah, can talk like to a million people. camera and eyes, different thing. You yeah. stare yes. at the camera, yeah. you see people shaking heads, someone looking at you that way. It's a totally different thing. We feeling. totally understand that. So oh. how did it go? So I, I get up there and I'm like, screw it. I like, I ignored my fears and I went up there and then they had stopped taking questions to people before me. And I was so, cause I, I, I fought that fear. I was like, I want to talk to this man. Um, and I immediately noticed that after the speech, he didn't leave the stage. He had come up mm -hmm. to the front of the stage and there were people walking towards him. And like, I, without even thinking, I just walked up towards him. I walked up to him and I had, I had gone right in front of him. I'm looking at him and I'm just like, all right, like, you know, I, I, it's just like, I'm, I'm going to speak. So I said, <laughs> I really wanted to ask you, <laughs> I was like, I really wanted to ask you a, a, a question, but I didn't get called on. But the question I wanted to ask you was, you know, you keep talking about, you know, the, uh, the next level of Twitter, which is like Twitter 2.0, which is the everything app. They didn't ask you about that. They were just talking about political stuff, right? And I was yeah. more interested in what do you have the planned actual to do tech. Yeah, the actual yeah. tech. The actual <laughs> you thing just that... bought this company for billions of dollars. What are you going to yeah, do what, with it? What the fuck is it going to become? Because everyone's yeah. judging it. Everyone's like watching so closely, but everyone's so worried about the political side. Actually, the reason we have you today, like I said in the very beginning, is we want to know about the tech. We want to know what the fuck is going to ha happen that's going to affect us. So yeah. what, what did he say to that? So he's like, he kept it simple. I mean, there were a lot of, a lot of people bombarding him, but he listened to me. He was like, looking at me. He's like, just know it's coming. You know, it's coming. So, and and the everything app is essentially, from what I understand, is you know he's gonna make it like a WeChat what they have in China, mm -hmm. sending payments over. You know, even ordering mm -hmm. like Ubers, ordering a car. Like it's crazy, right? You've got this, and that's what he he's he's working on that right now. Um, and I I found that to be you know we just I took a selfie with him. He was looking away, but I just took a bunch of photos. <laughs> and, um, but but with all of this <laughs> happening now, I love how he's, uh, he was looking away when I just like <laughs> grabbed my phone and I <laughs> have to man. It's like no, if I you mean, don't take the I photo, would, it's would, like you weren't say, there. I would I think I would. I would like I, I, could, I wouldn't be able to talk if I see him. Probably I, fanboy I'll, moments. I'll like, fucking stutter, <laughs> man. I'll yeah, fucking. Like I can have like millions of followers on social media if I see Elon. It's just that it's like a celebrity moment. He's not just any. No, he's he's such a role model. I would say, yeah. especially for us in terms of like how he drives things, how hardworking he is, yeah. his vision for things that he does. I I mean. Really, kudos to I, him. I believe that genuinely the people who work really hard appreciate Elon Musk. It's just, it's just, it's just because game recognizes game. And when they see Elon Musk and he's achieved the impossible in so many different industries, people who work hard will see that. And, and of course, no one is perfect. Everyone has, you know, things that they do wrong. Everyone has the things that they do right. But genuinely speaking, I believe he's done more right than wrong. Yeah. And so that's why we're very supportive of what he does. But I think, Farad, you had some specific questions yeah, about I mean, Twitter itself. Th yeah, especially that now you, you know, you t he answered your question. Does your strategy changes on Twitter now? Like, would you be posting more? Would you going to change the content type that you're going to post on Twitter? Isn't How do you going to see Twitter changes over the next few years, actually? Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, the... I think the major benefit of something like Twitter becoming more, you know, friendly in terms of, you know, just sending payments, et cetera, is the mm -hmm. fact how monetizing a, a, a following on Twitter is going to become a lot easier, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
how would we put this into perspective? You know, in, in you know, TikTok, TikTok uh, and Instagram, right? Instagram is a better example because it's been around longer. Instagram was around, it's been around since like 2010, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And it first started off as just a simple, you know, photo sharing app where you could add filters. Um, and then next thing you know, you know, it's massive and they're bringing in billions of dollars because they are selling ads. But, you know, in terms of the actual content creator, it became only a couple of years in that, you know, influencers actually get paid you know, by other companies to promote products. And that was just mm-hmm. one form of getting, you know, making money. But then, you know, mm-hmm. over time, Instagram themselves started a- implementing different things that would just support creators because they recognized how valuable that aspect was. Um, mm-hmm. Like, you know, sta- like Instagram, like I think exclusive, like premiums, you know, where people could follow you and uh, pay you like $5 a month and get premium content from you. These, these, these features are all relatively new. And by the way, that's very sad to think that, you know, we, you know, we're all creators here, right? You guys are yeah. creating content all the time. We're creating content right now. Yeah. To think that we are doing so much for these platforms and we, they didn't even give us the tools to make a living up until mm-hmm. like two or three years is such a disaster, right? So yep. uh, if he creates this infrastructure where money is is being sent on this all the time, then to th- like it's going to become like, yo, as simple as I'm about to give you this video. If you like this video in any way, shape, or form, f- please feel free to click that button below. Send me a five dollar, you know, five dollar like tip um, yeah. if this video adds value to you. And the next thing you know, people that are making viral videos and viral content are going to get paid as a result. It's not going to be like, yeah. oh, you. Uh, so that I think that that you know, just to see creators make more money is awesome to me. He added mm-hmm. subscriptions, which is exactly that, and it's it's he's been pushing it heavily recently, um, yeah. and that's what I what I'm really happy to see. Just creators creators making like actually making a living from the time they're putting in have you seen oh sorry no go ahead. i just wanted to ask have you seen any because you've been on the platform for a long time have you seen any changes since elon took over like i personally saw a lot of less bots a lot of less dms that you know you have won this nft campaign or uh, like all these like a lot of we had loads of those like (laughs) instead of in, in terms of reach and engagement and authentic community have you seen changes since elon took over Definitely. I'll say that, yeah. you know, a lot of a lot of the bo- a lot of the scam guys, people that were lying about their, their reach, they, they've completely left the, the channel because they uh, by adding I think Instagram actually added this today, but or yesterday by adding the, the shares, the shares. Oh, and the, the shares. Right. right. Yes. And by, by adding like the not the shares, the the saves, the, the, the impressions, all these things that they added, it made you, you realize that, wait, this tweet has. 17,000 likes, but only 10 mm. impressions, right? Like yeah. this is fishy. So he, he added these little things that by nature just removed the scammers. And that was, mm. it's evident, you know, that's for sure. Mm. In addition to that, I've noticed that, you know, he's been so transparent. Uh, you know, I actually was very skeptical about Elon Musk when he first, you know, bought Twitter, because I know that he could, I knew that he could build a uh, you know, a, a rocket company, right? Or a space company, mm-hmm. SpaceX. I knew that he could build cars. Like, you know, he could disrupt that in those, both those industries. Um, and I knew that he could even deal with, you know, software, which is payment processors, you know, PayPal. I didn't know uh, if he could, you know, online banking more specifically, but I didn't know if he could, you know, thrive in social media because that's not what his, his specialty is. You know, Mark Zuckerberg, he was majoring in psychology before he dropped out, right? That was his major. Mm-hmm. Elon Musk majored in, uh, I think he majored in physics, and economics, which is why he made PayPal and why he, mm-hmm. you know, SpaceX. But he didn't, he doesn't, I don't know if he has an understanding of psychology at, at that level, right? Or community building, uh, friendships. And I, I was very impressed with, he did one thing, which was he made the algorithm public, right? The code for the algorithm public. So as a creator, we all know now, and just users in general, oh, if I post a video, it gets a 10x boost. If I have correct grammar, it gets a 3x boost. He made all that info public. so. Instead of just like everyone trying to figure out the algorithm and just losing their minds, like how it is as a creator on other platforms like YouTube and you know all the other platforms that exist, he made that info public so everyone can actually have real insight and 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 not just be you know blindly trying to figure shit out. Um, mm-hmm. There's a real structure to all the, to everything. No, I genuinely agree with what you said. I think it, I, I I believe yes, the the you know taking a bachelor's or a degree in a certain study definitely helps. But I think at the end of the day, the fact that he's transparent and actually just wants to do good, as in make that town square that he's always talking about with Twitter, where people can comfortably share information without feeling like they will be canceled or feeling like their information is going to be shadow banned. I think just having that transparency 
causes greatness, in my opinion. So if he just continues having that as his main purpose, I think, in my opinion, this is going to work out. Now, what do you think the monetization is going to look like over there? Of course, there's the subscriptions and all that, but we know that the king of monetization to this day is still YouTube, right? Nothing beats that long-form content. Yeah. YouTube is still one of the only platforms that can pay creators a huge amount where they can literally just focus solely on content creation on one platform and still win more than any other creator. Twitch, I think, is one of the other ones because of the fact that there's a lot of live viewers and the live viewers donate. We haven't seen much of that on TikTok and Instagram. I mean, they're definitely trying. How do you think Twitter is going to change? Twitter has mostly been text where people just put in their thoughts and now it's becoming long threads because now the engagements are getting better and better and Elon is definitely a part of that. So do you think they're going to be adding in long-form content? Because we definitely, we know we all consume long-form content. We, we, we try to create long-form content nowadays do you think that twitter will eventually be monetizing using that what do you think their plan will be in, in there it's a great question so i think that you know there are you know at the king's letter we've been talking about we've been discussing how do we create more of a cult following it's one thing to get engagement because you're good at creating content right and just like using the formula this will go viral let's post it and then it goes viral versus like whatever the f i post will get likes because we have a cult so mm -hmm. you you mentioned this that YouTube and Twitch are the best at you know you know setting up their their creators so that they can make a shit ton of money. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, they're also really good at building insanely strong communities. So yeah. you know uh, uh, you know here's a great example. You know, uh, Tabby Lame. Tabby Lame has one of the he has the largest following on TikTok. Maybe I think this I don't guy know right the guy who does yeah. this all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So with that following, hundreds of over a hundred million followers, if I'm not mistaken, he can post a photo on Instagram and only get, you know, 3% of his followers to like the post. Whereas, you know, somebody as basic as like Dream, who's a streamer, Kai Sinet, you yep. know, yep. Uh, you know, obviously Mr. Beast, Arak, when they post a photo on Instagram, it could be a photo of, 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 of their cat or literally a photo of, of their foot, right? Yeah. They will get 50% of their following if or more to like the damn picture. Yeah. So that is that is insane. And why? So we, we've been studying this because we wanted to understand why this is happening. We realize that it's happening for two reasons, right? One is it's whenever you're watching a creator for 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 45 minutes, you are you believe that you have more of a relationship with them. Whereas if you're looking at a creator for 15 seconds on a reel or a short form content, like piece of you know piece of content, it's kind of just like a quick high buy. Um, and Twitch, it's even more than that because with Twitch. You're not only looking at them for hours on end, but you're interacting and they're responding, right? Mm -hmm. So you feel like you know this person. You're in bed and you're like, I know this person. You know, you spend more time with them than your freaking friends. Um, yeah. And uh, that it's that right there that brings an incredible opportunity for monetization. So does Twitter leave that opportunity? I think it does. I think that Twitter leaves this, you know, I think it, there's this opportunity for people on Twitter to really engage with their audience and create this like, we know each other, right? Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, it, to, to add long form video is going to be very hard. Right? I don't think they're going to have a simple time doing that. And the reason why I say that is because I remember when Instagram tried doing that, I don't even know, like five years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it didn't, no, it didn't work out. It's just people. They, they call it TV, right? Instagram TV. Insta TV. IGTV. Right? TV. Okay. IGTV, IGTV yeah. yeah. It's just, I think people build this uh, habit of like, you know, we, we, I think we, everyone's seen that meme where there's four photos, how people post their photo on LinkedIn, how they post on Tinder, how they post on Instagram versus Twitter. <laughs> it's just true. It's just true. On, on LinkedIn, when you go, you're like, I'm honored to be with this person. And, and then the same post on, on Instagram, when we write the caption, it's like, yo, I had a fucking great time with this dude. <laughs> it's just our psychology changes and people don't tend to go to Twitter for long form content. Now, that was the question me and Farad had. Can Elon Musk come and change it all because he's proven that he can truly make electric it's not cars sexy. Be easy though, it's not he made be electric easy. cars sexy. Like he literally made electric cars that were boring as fuck and everybody hated them to something that everyone wants to have. At least, at least one Tesla. You know, everyone wants to at least have an experience of driving one because he made it cool. And potentially, what I'm hoping for is eventually he can do that. Is it going to be easy? Definitely not. Like having a library as rich as YouTube that has been there for years. To have all those, you know, videos stored, it's not going to be easy. But we're all hoping. But I appreciate your answer. Now, Farhad, shall we? No, but I, I think one point that Joseph brought up, which was we were talking about yeah. it the other day. You know, our Instagram grew hundred percent. I think over the past few weeks, and it's been crazy. We are 
But one thing that I realized and I was talking to and I wanted to talk to you is that how do we make sure that the followers that we get as a creator on these social media platforms are genuine followers and we have engagement with them? The question is, okay, we have now followers. We, we have millions of views on TikTok and Instagram. But if I say tomorrow, I want to put a meetup, how many people will actually show up? Because yeah. if Mr. Beast does that, a lot of people would show up. Yeah. But I'm not sure if we do that, if one person will show up or no. So when you said you are studying all of this, I really want to know your take on how to build a community, no matter how side. Like, I want to build a community of 10. Because now the problem is, if I have 6,000 followers on Instagram and I post a video, Instagram will show that to my non-followers more than to show it to my followers. 90% yeah. of the time is people who don't follow me even. So what do you think of the whole concept of creating a community on social media platforms? It's great. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's a really good thing to observe right now at this time because uh, right now we're, we're at this incredibly strange point in social media where if people don't think about this, they're going to get weaned out. Uh, this is my opinion. Um, so right now it's, it's very important to think about this. And I'd say that there are, there are a couple of ways to, to, to do this. I think one of them is by recognizing that, you know, Mr. Beast is a great content creator to look to in terms of work ethic, uh, constantly learning how to create a banger, you know, socially wiring the video to always get views and go viral. But he, at the same time, he also ruined social media. I know that's a bold statement, but I'm going to explain why. How, how, he, why do you say that? He ruined social media because now it's come to this point where everybody just thinks about how do I socially wire this video so that people keep watching? as opposed to how do I make this video, you know, my mine? how do I make this mine? Right. Where it's like, mm -hmm. this is, this is me and the audience is following because of me, not because I'm making them a, keep keeping them watching for every five seconds. Right. So, you know, my brother recently called me and he said to me, he's like, listen, bro, I've been, I've been watching your videos and I think you should drop your, 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 your voice, your tone where I say like this thing, da, 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 da. you mm -hmm. know, like there's a whole, and he's like, dude, Everybody does that. And like, it's not how you speak, bro. And I, at first I got, I was like, yeah, what is this guy talking about? And then I'm like, he's right though. It's like, whenever you scroll and you see somebody who just makes a unique video where you're like, I've never seen them. This person is really just genuinely being themselves. You're a lot more attracted and you actually are able to identify out of all the shit that we see on the hours of scrolling, that person, you're able to identify them. Um, whereas if you're making the same content as everyone else, you're never going to build a community. So I would say it's like really contribute to something that hasn't already been done in your own, in, with your own flavor. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is I would say is, is going live. Uh, going live is a great way to really create an incredible audience of people. You know, I mean, when I first started on, when I first started in the NFT space, I had another page called NBA Top Shot News. Keep in mind, I only had 10,000 followers then, but my posts I would get, I would get a thousand likes. So I was seeing about, you know, on, on, or more uh, on my posts, which means I was having 10%, you know, engagement on my posts. Or, I mean, in terms of just like likes or comments, et cetera. But, you know, that, that engagement was insane. And my lives, it was all because I would go live every single day without a doubt. Um, and then another one is really double down on, on long form content. I know that you guys are doing this, um, but I would say that long form content creates, like I mentioned, this relationship that goes beyond just seeing a person 15 seconds a day. It's like, wait, these guys have a podcast. Let me go see that. Or they made a, a 15 minute video today on YouTube talking about going deep on this subject. I, I'm, I'm happy to watch that. And then slowly but surely, you're going to realize that this audience is going to tune in every single day or whatever you post as opposed to just stumbling upon you. Uh, it's yeah. very important that they, people can't just stumble upon you. That, no, that makes perfect sense. And uh, there's so many things that just popped up right after you said that. I think let's take it back a little bit because we didn't even talk about your journey. I guess for a yeah. lot of people watching, we want to know exactly what was that aha uh -huh moment for you when you first realized, you know what? I need to start making content. I want to make content. And I'm, I'm sure it didn't start the way you're, you're doing it right now. But what was that moment that you made that switch in your head that, you know what? Content's for me. I got I to gotta share what I know every single day. Wow. Oh, it's a great. It's a it's a great question. <laughs> you guys are asking some good questions. I uh, I think that at 15 years old, or or less, 14 years old, perhaps, I was um. I was, I was, I was into sneakers. Very into sneakers. I think I was around 15. Sorry, and I had 
decided that I wanted to create some sort of a hype clothing brand. Um, mm. And back then I was, I, I, I figured this out, which was, I can't just start the clothing brand and then try to get people to buy the clothing when I have zero mm. followers. I've got to create a community, build a community of people. And then eventually once I built the community, sell them clothing. So, mm. um, you know, a great example of that is Hidden New York. I don't know if you guys know that, that Hidden New York on Instagram, they did that. They're a freaking massive clothing brand now. But the idea was, create a new a sneaker news page where I just share news around sneakers. Uh, mm -hmm. I called it sneaker military. It's not around anymore. I tried finding it. I don't know where it went, but, and I would just post news around the sneaker, you know, the sneaker industry, right? So if there was a drop, uh, a Yeezy drop, I would post about it. If there was a Jordan drop, I'd post about it. Everything ultra boost that was around that time. So everything that was related to sneakers that was hype, mm -hmm. I posted, I built this following up to 15,000 followers. Um, I had some partners who were going to build a clothing brand with me things didn't end up working out as well. And I, after like, I think around like four months of working on the page, I just ditched it. And I always looked back and I was like, damn, like that was awesome. I loved building the page. I, I know I should have kept going. I don't know why I stopped. And then I slowly along the journey started to build more pages, right? I started to build it as, as I personally changed. That's when I started to build different pages. So when I became interested in video games, I built a video game page, didn't do well. When I became interested in partying, I built a party page. <laughs> <laughs> Every, any single interest no, but, but page, that, let's go. But that's, that shows that like, if you try something, if it didn't work the first time, it yeah, might work going. on a second or third keep time, going. right? Keep going. Yeah. 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 And, then, and then what happens? So you build all these multiple pages, you build them up, and then you stop. You build them up, and yeah. then you stop. And so then I what took, happened? So I took a break. So it's like that was in high school. That all took place in high school. And then I'm in, you know, uh, come out of high school, COVID's around whatever, like, you know, a couple of years, or we're talking about like a couple of years out of that, after that whole phase, didn't even think about that whole time in my life where I was building pages and uh, NBA Top Shot, NFTs, all of a sudden these things are coming up. And I started, I, one night, I just go heavy duty. Just literally, I heard about, the, I heard about NBA Top Shot probably an hour ago. I'm in bed and I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. Like 2,500 bucks in there. Like I just was like, screw it. I'm just putting 2,500 bucks in there. And that month that money turned into like it went like turned into like it turned into a lot of money right let's just say that um <laughs> in, in a very short period of time and mm -hmm. this was before gary v and all the other people who made top shot and nft so big were talking about mm -hmm. it right so yeah. i had was i'm i'm there i'm sitting here thinking what the fuck? i'm seeing a bunch of you know people spending hundreds of thousand dollars on these nba highlights i'm here making money as well and not a single piece of media, you know, is covering it. Not even. Not no one's single, talking about it. No one's, no one's talk. talking about it. So I, I took it upon myself to start making videos about this, right? So mm -hmm. what did I do? I, I, I immediately um, opened up a TikTok channel and an Instagram channel called it NBA Top Shot News and started making videos. And I, at first, all I knew how to do was make video, make still posts because that's what I did. Was but I had a basic understanding of graphic design, so. I was scared to show my face. So I would just like, I remember my wife, she was my girlfriend then, she could even tell you this. I was so scared that I would just take screenshots and screen recording and I would just do voiceovers in the beginning for the first six right. months. So no face, not, no, no, no face. face. Okay. No face. And, but I was doing well because what I was talking about, what I was showing was so outlandish, right? That people were like, dude, what the hell is this guy talking about? This LeBron highlight sold for 250 grand. What is he saying? Right? They're like, yeah. All the comments were hate, but the hate was pushing yeah. the video. The hate yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, the hate's, hate's great. We love hate the comments. The hate is fucking amazing. Every single man. hater in the comment. Hate I personally on this podcast. love you. Let's go on let's, this episode. Let's dude, go. you have no idea. Like, if we get hate, that post does so well. Our best posts like, are the most hated posts. Oh my god, I love every single. <laughs> They're hater. just like shitting on us constantly, and then <laughs> under the shitty comments, there's other people shitting on us even more, and then they keep fighting, and I'm like, there yeah. you go, keep <laughs> <Yes>. going. <laughs> Engagement's going up. So yeah, exactly. that's okay. So I'm, I'm really glad you said that. And we're going to come back to that. Just the fact that you started with no face. And no I want to I wanna talk about that even more after that. But so how did that go? So you started with no face. You were just recording your audio. People were hating in the comments. And then, and then what happened after that? Yeah. So I mean, I, I kept making videos about that. And, you know, eventually my family and my friends and everyone, they're trying to convince me to make, to show my face, right? And I knew that I had the ability to show face because... When I was when when I was probably also in high school around that same time, I had this dream of becoming a vlogger, and I made two or three vlogs that I never put out, and they were fully edited vlogs. We're talking about fully 
10 to 15 minute vlogs of me traveling to New York, Hawaii, right? And I never put them out because I never had the confidence, but I showed my face in them, right? So they were like, I knew that I could do it and I could talk to camera. I just wasn't perfect. So that's why I stopped doing it. And then oh, I didn't put it out and I had to overcome that fear. And then once I finally was just like, you know what, fuck it. Like these people clearly like my voice. They like the content I create anyways. I'm sure if I show my face, it can't be that bad, right? So I started. I started. <laughs> I, can't, I, I, I can't be that bad. Right? <laughs> yes. Let's put it up there, man. So I, I started, guys, but 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 I, wait a minute here. Yeah. Anybody who is listening, this story is so inspiring. Not being able to show the face now, more than three hundred thousand followers in yeah. all social media, and faces everywhere on every fucking <laughs> and, and post. You, you guys, <laughs> now, because I meet a lot of people that they know they have to do content. They know that yeah. they want to do, but they're just sometimes they are shy of their. I mean, personally, I was talking about my accent. I was talking about like, mm. would I show my face? Yeah. Like, just do it. Just do it. There's and you, so uh, many. There's so many of our friends. So many of the people that we talk to, and and especially today's world. Everybody, in my opinion, has the potential to do content because content is not like before when it was like put on a pedestal. Everyone's like, oh my God, it's so scary. Now, everybody's doing it. Like, it, it's just so accessible, so easy yeah. to just pick up your phone and do it. And it, we're just in a day and an age that content is the way to market yourself. It's the new yeah. resume. And, and no matter what you do, whether you're a janitor, whether you're a CEO, whether you're a barista, whether you're doing 3D animation, if you create content, all you're doing is just saying to other people, yo, I'm, I'm good I'm at here, this. This yeah. is my passion. And eventually you'll start attracting communities and people in that same industry, in that same domain. And I, I, I want you to continue, but I just wanted to say this. Like Farhad said, there's so many people watching and I know this is going to give them value because they know they have to start. But all they're afraid of is lack of equipment, lack of camera, lack of microphone, yeah. confidence. lack of confidence. But the truth is, none of that will be there in the beginning. You just have to fucking go for it. So I want to know, um, actually, if you can start and continue, but also tell me what equipment you had when you were starting out. Where, did you have like a, I don't know, a proper like setup? Like, what what like, the fuck yeah. were you starting with? Yeah, what was your equipment like? A fucking iPhone, man. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's sick. That's, that's, what do you think? You know, like, I didn't go out. I mean... At a certain point, you know, I did buy a twenty or forty dollar um, uh, LED. What are those called again? Like those little circular LED lights. Ring lights. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, ring light. A ring light. It was literally. All TikTokers bucks. have them. All TikTokers yeah. have them now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, up until recently, I was I was reaching millions of people with an iPhone and a forty dollar ring light for yeah. over a year, and mm -hmm. I think that. Uh, this whole idea or this whole notion that nobody has, you know, has you can't start until you have all the equipment is mm. is, is just complete BS because the best camera, yeah. even when you are a high quality creator, the best camera you have is the one that's on you at all times, which is your phone. Because those mm. that's when you're capturing these agronic moments. Unless you're really able to run around with a camera all day, like Casey Neistat, like that's a very rare type of human. Right, the Casey Neistat of the world, the vloggers who just know how to walk around and create, you know, like David Dobrik's. Um, but if you're just starting off, there is no better. You shouldn't have a professional camera, right? You mm -hmm. should start with your phone. That, I, I would actually advise against getting a camera because it's going to become, yeah. it's going to make it harder, more steps, more complex. You know, in order to transfer the files, it's going to make it more so intimidating true. for you. And I would say, so do not get true. a camera. Yeah. So fucking true, man. That's I couldn't agree more. We told we we told each other like when we were starting this podcast, we're not gonna get any expensive setup aside from the microphone, mm -hmm. like nothing else. Like we got one of the the cheapest lights we could have gotten, and the only reason we did that is because we want to prove to ourselves, can we pull this off? And only when we do, we go and spend whatever amount we want. Yeah. Like let's pull it off first, because we like Farah knows this. I've done content before, very much like you. This is not the first. You know, when you look at your Instagram, this is not something you cooked up in a day. You've done this in the past, oh, multiple pages, multiple blogs. We've done this before as well. And every time I actually started spending on the setup, I ended up giving up on whatever I was doing because mm -hmm. I spent too long thinking about the shit that didn't even doing. matter. Yeah. Didn't even matter. So then what happened? So you started putting your face in the videos. Did it work out well? Did it not uh, get received well? Like, how did that go? Oh, very, it worked out very well. I mean, listen, and when I look back at it now, I think about, damn, that content this sucks. But, um, <laughs> but the truth is, is that the audience just started to grow even more. And I eventually mm -hmm. went from, okay, Top Shot is good, but let me start talking about you know, NFTs in general. 
launched NFTs, you know, with the page that I have now, the Kings letter used to be called NFT Kings. And with that, I literally exploded. I mean, we're talking about, I became, I reached millions of people, made videos with Snoop Dogg, was, we're talking to like celebrities. And like, it was like, it was like this, like show up to the NFT conferences. Everybody knows you. And I'm, and I'm an introvert, right? Whereas I'm able to be social on camera, but it personally, you know, I'm not necessarily this person that is, you know, so willing all the time to just go out and, you know, be very active with everyone. I like to stay home and to, you know, that was crazy. And I, uh, I didn't necessarily expect that because for me, it was just about like seeing numbers. It was just like, all right, cool. Like, you know, this video got 150 K, this video got a million, this video got this amount of numbers, 500 K. I didn't, I didn't know, you know, you don't, you don't correlate that there's actually a, a person behind that number. And when it really affected me is when I Googled, I was living in Los Angeles at the time and I had Googled how many people can sit in the Staples Center or, you know, now it's called Crypto.com Arena, but yeah. which is the stadium where the Lakers play. And yeah. uh, the answer was like 19,000, right? And I was thinking, fuck, man, like my videos on average, during that time, my average, my videos on average were getting 200K. I'm thinking, what the hell? If that's 19,000, like how many people are watching me? Like these are real. And that's when it really clicked. And I, I, I started to realize that I really had something here. I was like, okay, I got to. I got to figure out how to make this a career because I love this. I'm good at it clearly. Um, and I, I, I kind of viewed it as like, you know, I was in college at the time. Like, let's put a pause on college. Like, clearly that's not doing anything for me. Like this is oh, probably, yeah. yeah th Dude, this, you're reaching, yeah. like uh, you have to go and teach in that college how to create content, <laughs> how to reach people. There you go. No, it's literally, I, I don't think any professor in that college can teach you how to reach 200,000 people. No, yeah. end of this. No fucking way, because like, they yeah. haven't done it. They haven't fucking done it. You have about 188,000 followers on Instagram, around 1,500 posts, which you posted about that as well, by the way. Congratulations. Yeah. That's, Thank a, you. That's big a huge milestone. milestone, man. That's huge. A huge. Because I never thought of how many posts I would put on Instagram. And Faraz used to post, post a lot. So I went and checked his Instagram. So he was around 800. 800 yeah. So 1,005 is like almost double. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's not easy to be posting 1,500. And this not being the only page you have, uh, of course, it's a huge milestone. But what I want to ask you is, what do you think is your formula of success on Instagram as a social me media platform specifically? Wow. I mean, so I think there are two categories. I'm going to follow up with this with a question, right? Is there is it success in terms of growth or success in terms of monetization? Um, so, well, I, I, I don't even know what you mean by monetization on Instagram because, I mean, for us, we're not monetizing anything. I've never monetized anything on Instagram. If I've had anything was branded deals. So maybe mm -hmm. you can get to that. But I think mostly you want to talk about the community that you have, the fact that you have an engaging community commenting up under the post that you have mm -hmm. and, and, and just looking forward every single day to listen to what you have to say. Yeah. So I would say, wow, the, the secret recipe for that is is really, you know, it really goes By the way, can I, can I just say one thing? And we know there's no shortcuts. Like everything yeah, we talk about today, it's not about like, oh, what's a shortcut to success? It's more of like, you definitely have done it. What do you recommend other people do if they want to achieve what you have achieved? Oh, definitely, yeah. So, uh, yeah, definitely no shortcuts. I think that the, the big thing is identifying your audience before you even start a page, right? Mm -hmm. You know, some people, I see people... Um, you know, I heard Mark Zuckerberg, I think, was talking about this. Or he, I know he likes the meme, the meme aspect of Instagram. You know, a couple of years ago, not even a couple, more like six years ago, the whole meme culture was just starting on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's become so popular that the, the most followed page on, pages on Instagram are either, you know, meme pages or like sports pages, right? Like the ESPNs, the House of Highlights, and like puberty. Um, mm -hmm. But... Uh, you know, they identified a niche, which is like, I'm going to make people laugh, sports, and then they just freaking kept producing in that niche and providing the best possible content, educational content, uh, entertaining content in that particular niche. And I think that today there are so many other niches that haven't been attacked or, you know, that haven't, they haven't thrived to the level of puberty, to the level of House of Highlights on Instagram yet. So, you know, technology, right? Uh, the creator economy. These are all niches that people are interested in this shit. And if you're interested in that, you got to produce content for these people that will get them to be like, huh, right? So I think that it's it's mostly about like, what are you interested in? And are you learning every single day in that particular area? You know, people don't recognize that when I make a video, I more often than not just learned about the subject that I talked about in that video 
a couple of hours or a day or two <laughs> days before I made the video, right? So it's like, I'm not this like guy who has all this knowledge in my head and I'm just trying to make videos on it. I'm learning and then just sharing. It's very simple. Yeah. It's a very simple, it's like, I learned this, huh, that's quite interesting. Let's write a script on that, make boom, video out. Or how, that's a piece of news that I think people should know about. Quick post, make it up, photo, it's out, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. I think that it's a lot about like, just identify a niche and be a learner. And the most interesting things you learn, just share, right? Mm -hmm. That's for media. Um, um, but yeah, I think it, it, that general rule though, about identifying a niche and just sharing what's interesting in that particular niche, I think it can go a long way. Mm -hmm. I, I actually want to just ask you one question about that because I feel like if you're ever into that content creation process, if you look at content as a marketing tool for your passion, for what you're good at, and that could be art, that could be business, that could be sports, could, could, could be anything, right? It could be sneakers, what you started with. Mm -hmm. I believe that there's always two ways to look at it. There's the one way of you spending time learning experimenting and creating and then there's the other part which is creating the content which is what is the most feared part because everybody's good at doing the first part everybody is interested in something you know you either want to you know spend all your time Even working play games like you know something very simple you don't have to be like so technical you want to play mm -hmm. games you want to watch football there anything you yeah how do you balance your time between the learning, the researching and experimenting, which is the fun part that everybody loves, that their process. Like, again, maybe you're into sneakers. You want to spend 24-7 on just sneakers. But now, okay, there's this content creation part that can potentially take up the entire time. And the, the, like, the more time you spend on the content, the marketing, the more you're going to get out of it, right? How do you balance yeah. out? Because I know it's definitely a problem for us. Like, for example, I'm a mad Unreal Engine fan. And I know for me to learn Unreal Engine, I have to spend countless hours. And it's the fun part for me. I would love to spend countless hours, but if I actually want to create content and educate other people and grow Bad Decision Studio, I need to be equally sharing what I learned. And that means I need to cut off time from the learning to go and create in content. And creating content is not an easy game. The scripting, the learning, the researching, the creation, the learning on how to create better every single day takes up a huge amount of time. How the fuck do you balance that time? How do you balance between your learning, your craft versus the creation of the content? Wow. So no, it's a good point. And I think that it's a, it's something that every creator struggles with. And it's something mm. that can, you know, can give a lot of anxiety, right? Where it's just like, shit, I have to do X, Y, and Z today. Oh my God. Like I, I have to make a post. It, it kind of becomes overwhelming. But mm. I think the most basic thing is creating a system or putting systems in place that it, that it actually makes it that not as overwhelming as it, it as it as it seems right so it's and that seems or making it less overwhelming right so what is what is uh, your system like yeah so you know my system is in the beginning for the first three two years i was in the mud right i had to wake up in the morning you know and and research in addition to that i'm a religious jew so i spend the first hour of my day praying right so it's like mm. um after that research and then in after research it's like okay post wait i have a meeting at this hour I have to make this post in in 15 minutes, right? So I've got 15 minutes, a window of time to make a post. Okay, after the meeting, I now have five minutes of filming, right? So I have to make this script and I got to film this thing in less than a 10 minute window. And I would, I would juggle with my time all day and it became extremely overwhelming, but this was two years of my life. And mm -hmm. that was, you know, graphic design. It was just all day, every day until literally until my bed hit, my head hit the pillow. But then, you know, as things became a lot more, you know, the business became more profitable, I was able to hire an employee. Shout out to Dev. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I have freelancers doing other things as well, but he is my main guy. He is he is my right arm, right, in the yeah. business. He's my right arm. And what he does is, is while I'm taking this meeting, for example, now he's offline because, I mean, he doesn't, he, he just, he just clocked out. But while we're taking, while we're talking right now, when this interview is taking place, I gave Dev four or five tasks to complete. You know, mm -hmm. while I'm in this meeting, while while I'm shooting this video, while I'm doing X, Y, and Z. So this mm -hmm. way, instead of me having everything to do, I can outsource certain work. So I am I allow myself to be in certain places, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that you know not everyone has the opportunity to do. But what everyone does have the opportunity to do is is create systems where they they don't have to be so messy. I know Roberto, for example. I don't know if you guys know Roberto Nixon. Yeah, he's a so Roberto is a beast. I mean, we're talking about a guy who is a absolute veteran in the game of Instagram pages. He is 
he, you know, this guy's garnering millions of views, potentially hundreds of millions of views. It, 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 you know, truth be told, it's probably hundreds of millions of views. And he doesn't have anybody helping him with the content. And what he does is, is he's got a camera literally stapled, you know, in a certain place, yeah. prompt screenwriter. And he's got everything set up in his, in his studio so that the guy doesn't have to move and he can do everything in the shortest amount of time possible. And I, when I saw that, I recognized how if you're just smart about things and you're able to create certain structures uh, and, 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 you know, you're literally able to, you know, even both physically and, you know, mentally and, you know, like, you know, also scheduling, right? Just these, these, I guess the word here is, you know, these structures, right? That's the simplest way to put it. Mm-hmm. You will, you'll be a lot more productive than you actually think you could then you realize you actually have the ability to become right so it's like Mm -hmm. people think that they have a certain bandwidth but it's only because they are allowing themselves to drift away whereas if you don't allow yourself to drift away you'll achieve a lot more in a day um i know that i kind of went on a tangent there i sometimes digress but that's 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 what i was i think that's a perfect answer because at one point of time you really need to delegate and outsource and also you need to look at your day and you see how you can optimize it. We, yeah. we have done it so far and we have done it m- multiple times and reiterating on the same thing that, hey, I think we are wasting time here. I think this can be you know, cut short. So it's always good to balance out your schedule and see you yeah. know, where it can be improved. Yeah, no, shout out to Roberto. Like you mentioned, like we saw that video that he posted. We saw your video. Both of you guys, I think, shared a video about your process. And that's why I recommend people who are watching now go and watch how you guys actually script out and how you guys go into the process of creating and essentially we are doing sort of the same thing this table that you're looking at is our dining table we (laughs) used to take this back and then bring it back every single time for the podcast now we just fucking set it up here we're like we're eating here like we we do more podcasts and eating here so let's just do it it helped us to create more episodes now we have more guests per week because we're like not moving every single time so we set up that physical environment so that there's no way for us to bitch out. Like that's the simplest way to put it, right? There's no way you can escape it if the mic is set up right here. Like it's, it's just so easy to record. So I think your answer was perfect. If you provide that environment for yourself, you will eventually get into the habit of creating in, in a quicker and more efficient way. And also one more thing you mentioned about the fact that you're religious and the fact that you spend one hour every single day praying. I actually think that's a plus. We talked about this in the previous podcast that constraints that come in our life actually help us grow. So if you know you have limited time now and you're short an hour every single day, you will work harder to create more. You will really use that 15 minutes that you have to post. So I generally think actually having constraints throughout the day, whereas like, okay, I got to do this meeting, then I got to do this, I got to do that. All of this will actually help you be a little bit more efficient because now you're under pressure and pressure helps you grow. So I think that's that's definitely one of the reasons you're probably growing really quickly is because you gotta you gotta go. If you don't, if you don't move, you're not able to create. We were talking about Instagram and how Joseph grew it to 188,000 now, which is a huge number. But let's just look at TikTok. You have videos that have more than a million views, not one, multiple videos. So when you are creating for different social media platforms, do you have a different strategy in the head? So this is for TikTok. I should do it this way. And because I have done a million views multiple times, so probably I should follow that pattern. Do you have a sort of system in your head when you are creating? To make it for, contextual yeah. for that platform. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a misconception in social media that, short form content works on all platforms, right? It, it, it works in the sense that they all take short form content and they all occasionally, you'll have a viral video that goes viral on all, all videos, right? Like I recently had a video on all platforms. I mean, I, I recently had a video that, that got, I mean, right now it's still climbing. It has over 500,000 views on Instagram and it has over 900,000 views on TikTok, right? That video happened to be, thank God, a very good video, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I have one of my, my most viewed videos on TikTok or is is the Kai Sinet video where I explain Kai Sinet, and it only got forty. It only got it's, it's a lot of a lot of views, but forty five thousand, fifty thousand views on Instagram compared to one point three million on TikTok. That doesn't add up. Huge right? difference, yeah. Huge difference. So I, I we we dissected that and we we were looking into it. We're like, what what happened here? The content, you know, that's one thing. But I, that particular style of content on 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 Instagram has done well. Right. So it, it couldn't have been the style. What was it? Right. And on the latter, like that particular style of content didn't do well on TikTok as well. So what was it? So we came up with this 
it was very simple. The subject was catered to people who are on TikTok, not on Instagram. So Kai Sinet is this youthful 21 year old, 20 year old person who's on Twitch coming up, you know, that's where that's the people on TikTok. They like that. They like these Twitch streamers. They like that that particular you know area in, in the internet. Whereas mm-hmm. people on Instagram, they like creativity. You know, they like I don't know. They like they like podcasting. They like they like you know videography, little scenes like that, more mature yeah, cinematics. Yeah, a little bit more formal, I would say, on Instagram compared to TikTok. TikTok, you can just raw, have many raw cards. Exactly. And- yeah. Exactly. So w- that was our conclusion. So you know. At one point, we were like making different videos for each. We're like, okay, let's do TikTok videos and then let's do Instagram videos. But it became very complex. You know, I wasn't able to create the time for both. Um, so we try to have this like middle ground where it can meet both and with our subjects at least. But occasionally it'll be like, you know what? This is not a good Instagram post. This is a good TikTok post. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll separate that. And it's very much so just recognizing the audience, right? So just identifying. So just- yeah. Just based on that, um, so do you do the Gary Vee thing where like the, an idea or a news or a trend comes and then you try to contextualize it for Instagram and also for TikTok and also for Twitter? Or no, you understand about this new uh, trend that is out and you're like, you know what? This only works for Twitter. I'm just going to put this on Twitter. Or do you try to like contextualize it to everything? Uh, ideally, you know, I would try to context- contextualize everything, into, you know, everything. So like uh, mm. the best way to put this is like, we, whenever we have a subject that needs a deep dive, we automatically put that on the newsletter. If it's too, mm-hmm. if it's too complex and it, it requires somebody who wants to read and like is, a, is open to reading a, a three minute article, that immediately mm-hmm. goes to the newsletter. And then once we have it written down, occasionally we'll turn that into a thread. I, have, I don't do that as often as I should, but we'll turn that into a thread because it's already written there. Occasionally, you know, you could throw that into ChatGPT and say, help me turn this into a Twitter thread. It, it could do that for yeah. you. Um, but then there's also like, the idea behind, wait, what if we just made, made this a reel as well or a short form piece of content on TikTok? Mm-hmm. So uh, we try to do that because it just makes the process a lot easier. If it's already written as an article, it could work as everything else as well. But a lot of the times, it, you know, it just doesn't work. So it, it's not, the ideal situation doesn't pan out as you would like. So, you know, mm-hmm. there might be a, a subject that we went deep into on the article, but it's too technical. And if we start talking about this, it's going to be a complete snore fest, right? Like everyone's yeah. just going to be sleeping. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, on the rare occasions that it does happen, you know, like, you know, obviously everyone's talking about this AI music, right? Like the Drake and The Weeknd that happened recently. Oh my wow. God, that bro. Was that song was fucking lit. Oh, I love the song, by the way. It was so good. It was so good. Yeah. What did you think? What did you think about it? The song? It's, it was amazing. I mean, I was playing it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so, crazy. Yeah, I, that goes everywhere. That That's the type of thing that's a newsletter article. You know, you can make a video about it. You can make a, a post about it. You can make that on Twitter. That is some. Whenever you have a viral moment in your niche, you got to put it. You have to capitalize on every single damn platform. But if not, if it's something that's not necessarily a viral, do not capitalize on everything. Like, do not do that because you're just gonna, you're gonna be recycling everything. People are gonna know that you're not genuine and that you that you actually care about the audience. You're just you're just looking for the easy way out. You know. Okay. Uh, about that, I actually want to ask you, let's say I'm an artist, I'm a sketch artist, or I'm a sculptor uh, in 3D, or I'm a musician, and I'm just starting out. I've never made content before. I'm watching this podcast. I'm inspired by you. I want to start creating. Do you recommend I go deep into one platform and go fully into, let's say, Twitch and just start streaming every day? Or do you recommend I try to disperse everything, just do a little bit on Twitter, a little bit on Instagram, a little bit on TikTok, and just try every platform and try to be everywhere as much as possible you know i recently had a kid you know call me he's in high school now and he's he's really trying to build a a name for himself on social media um Mm -hmm. and he asked me this question and i said i asked him what is your favorite platform and beyond not even consumption wise to contribute wise right consumption is one Mm -hmm. thing somebody could be like i i spend my most time on tiktok but i like Mm -hmm. to tweet the most right which is very possible so In terms of contributing, what is your favorite platform? He said Twitter. So I said, you should spend literally 90% of your efforts should be on Twitter because you understand Twitter. You are embellished in the community. You know, you understand, you you know, it, it's what you, it's what you love. And then mm-hmm. the 10% of your time should just go to reposting what you've already created on Twitter and just repurposing it onto the other platforms. But don't spend, don't try to become the next big YouTuber 
when you actually spend most of your time and you're obsessed with people on, on TikTok, right? It's like, it's going to be hard for you. Uh, and I, I'd say that only once you're able to grow a certain amount of, you know, to a certain level on Twitter or whatever that dedicated platform that you're spending 90% of your time on, do, should you reallocate your time to the other platforms as well? Because then it's like, okay, I'm trying to get more of a global reach, not just this like, you know, niche, uh, uh, you know, growth on a particular platform, you know, like, mm-hmm. I spent so much time on Instagram. It came to a certain point where I, I, I realized that if I don't go to the other platforms, then what am I going to like, what is this going to ta- turn into? Right. It's like, if I want to create a real company, I've got to have a following a, a subscribe, you know, subscribers on YouTube. I've got to have a following on Twitter. I've got to, I've got to dominate all of media or else it's just a Instagram page. Right. Which is not as, which is not as good as a media page. Right. Which is everything. Yeah. So, um, but it had to start with Instagram because that's, that's just how I how I, I knew that I had something. So that's what I would say. 90% one, 90% one platform that's your favorite, 10% the other ones. And then eventually once you're able to grow there, reallocate. I love yeah. the answer. Yeah. I fucking love the answer. Yeah. And I think a lot of people like spread the stretch themselves too thin by just, you know, posting on everywhere. And then sometimes you create one video and put it on LinkedIn, which is mm-hmm. not really contextualized yeah. for that platform. So it's it's really like what he mentioned that Put 90% on your favorite platform and then the rest you can repost it on the platform that you think it might work. Yeah, narrow down at first and then you can go wide. Now, consistency seems to be a huge part of your success. The fact that you're always consistently up on social media, always putting out the latest trends, the latest news, and just sharing what you know with people for free, right? Sharing that knowledge for free. How do you stay inspired and make sure you stay consistent you know if you would have asked me this question like a month ago i would have given you a different answer so i'm very happy this happened to me but uh (laughs) you know my whole game at a certain point was no matter what i need to make a video i don't give a shit what happened that day there needs to be a video that need that that is getting made today right and i i thank god i was able to be i was able to do this for three years three years i made a video pretty much every day, right? Even if I'm there and I'm literally having, you know, writer's block, more creativity block, right? I didn't even, I didn't allow that to affect me. I had to make a video. Um, And it served me well for a certain period of my life, for the growth period, right? In the beginning. Um, But then it became, it came to a certain point where you've got an established following and it's no longer about consistency. It's about quality. You want to make sure that every single video that you produce is entertaining and the the audience actually enjoys and is gaining value out of it as opposed to you know them just understanding that you weren't in it and they didn't you know, he didn't necessarily care about this he just wanted to make a video and you know it's you know it, they could read that i mean people the viewers sub you know unconsciously or you know uh, or even you know consciously can recognize when you're not being authentic so i'd say the big thing for me was was consistency in the beginning, but I've reached a point where it's like, am I inspired today? You know, am I, is there something that I genuinely believe I want to share, share with my audience? Um, and if there isn't, sometimes I'll take a step back, right? I'll, I'll, I'll share news. I'll share something else that I think the audience should understand, should know about, you know, I always have something to to share. Um, but when it comes to creating a video, there are, there are days where, where, where I won't post because I think that it's, it's more important now with this competitive market in social media to produce your best as opposed to your, mm-hmm. you know, your, 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 your mediocre work. And I think that, mm-hmm. um, it, it really depends on the, on the particular situation. Sometimes somebody's hot, right? If you're hot, if you're, if you're in the audience right now and you're at on this role every single day, you're inspired. There's something that's coming up, then run with it, keep going. But the moment that you hit a wall, which happens to every creator, by the way, when you hit a wall, and you are just like, what the hell? Nothing is working. A month, two months goes by, and you're just not. Your your videos are not. They're not it. Like you do, you'll know, right? That's when you're like, I need to relax a little bit and let me just post when I when I have something. And I think that that it's a, it's something that as a creator you'll know. You'll know when those points come. And uh, yeah. I want to talk about the tools that you use. Of course, we talked about how you started, you know, with, with the iPhone and, 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 and potentially just without your face in any of the videos. Now, of course, your face is there. You are creating consistently and with all the AI tools that are out there and you talk about the AI tools. 
I guess we want to know what are some of your favorite tools that you're using right now to help you create your best version of the content. This, this, is, this is the secret sauce. <laughs> I'd say that, you know, in terms of physical equipment, right? I keep it very simple. I mean, I have I have a camera, like I have a camera pointing at me right now. It's a Canon, it's a very simple camera. It's a Canon T7i Rebel, you know, like a, you know, just a very simple Canon. Um, and I haven't used it for a single video. I just have it pointing at me, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I use my phone. That's funny. I have it, I haven't and used it. <laughs> I haven't used it. I use my phone, turn my phone around, cinematic mode, lower the exposure a little bit, whatever, make it like that it looks nice. And I just plug in my, my, this is hardware, right? I plug in my, I don't know if you can see this right now, actually, it's a little tough, but my uh, simple microphone, hundred dollar microphone, a blue Yeti. Um, I have it on like a little like arm, whatever the heck. And you know, some lights, some studio lights, two of them They didn't cost too much, probably probably like 200 bucks, whatever. And that's my, that's my studio. That's my setup. Um, and then in terms of software, like software, you know, AI tools, I have a, I have occasionally if the audio gets you know shot and whatever it is that recorded you know i have this segment coming up where i call i speak about a particular person and then i call the person on the phone and the audio from that was caught from you know from his his speech on the phone wasn't was a little bit choppy so i threw that into an ai tool called adobe studio and it was able to fix up the audio make it sound nicer right if i'm on the go i'm outside and i and i i have a you know the audio there's windy and stuff like that adobe studio gets rid of all of it makes it sound nice that's why I make my audio always sound crisp, no matter where I am, always have to have good audio. And then, you know, for the newsletter, it's obviously ChatGPT. Like if you're, if you have a newsletter and you're not using ChatGPT, you're just wasting your life. Like you're just wasting your time. You're being it's stupid. It's very stupid. Um, I wouldn't say to like literally do all the writing for you, but I would say to make your life easier where it's like, okay, you know, I write it, write the article. Okay. Do X, Y, and Z to this article. Help me do X, Y, you know, wh you know, whatever. Whatever it is to just make it more spicy, put a little bit of twist on it. Is this correct? Any grammatical errors, errors, all that. And then in terms of, uh, you know, media, pure media, mid journey, you know, what I recognized. And by the way, I have some buddies who are, I have friends who have millions of followers, tens of millions of followers in social media. And I had called them and I had or text them. And I explained that why aren't you using mid journey, right? It's like, when before in media, before Mid Journey was around, if there was a, a piece of news, you know, surrounding Amazon and Jeff Bezos, I had to go and find a photo of Amazon, uh, 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 maybe the Amazon building and Jeff Bezos, you know, layer it, make it look nice, lower the exposure to have some sort of uniqueness and then post that, right, with some text on it. Now I can actually generate a photo of Jeff Bezos as a robot because that image is so is unique and it's never been posted before and it's, it grabs the eye and now I've, I have a unique piece of content. Whereas before, if there was a news, everyone was just going to use the same photos anyway. So it's like mid journey is a go-to for us. We always use mid journey for our media posts because uh, why not? Right. And then, um, yeah, that's, you know, when I'm starting company, I mean, they're, they're like AI generate, uh, like uh, logo generators for like just different side things, but for the content creation, oh, those are the go-tos, you know, I want to know how do you think, AI is going to be now implemented into social media platforms. And let me clarify what I mean by that. We've seen new AI tools pop out every single day and they get better and better and they are in all domains, right? Script writing, image generation, video Podcast generation. Everything, everything. Everything. And now with TikTok, I'm not sure if you guys heard, they added the AI avatars. Very recently, what we had seen a couple months ago where everyone started posting their AI images of themselves on social media, TikTok is now doing that within their platform, which means we're slowly going to see, you know, Meta, TikTok, potentially even Elon Musk for Twitter is starting to add, you know, AI into the platform. How do you think that's going to change content creation for someone like yourself? Oh man, it's entertaining. I mean, you know, TikTok is the king at, I've never seen a platform have the ability to keep, continue to, to, to provide their creators with entertaining entertaining stuff. So, you know, they have mm -hmm. templates where, you know, people create these, like this video I, that recently has come up of, uh, you know, I forgot his name, um, where he's dancing, you know, and it, it, wearing headphones. I don't know how to explain that one. It's a template, mm -hmm. a CapCut template. And then oh, there's isn't that also the John this, Cena, the, the John Cena one, right? Yeah. I don't know if his name is, is it John Cena? His name is John. That's, is it John Cena? It is. 
I know that I I, I don't I, I don't want to 100% say John Cena because I, I wasn't for sure, but I think it's John Cena. And then they've also got these the AI tool that you were talking about recently, where you would just film yourself and you would get it would turn you into an AI. They also have this new trending this new trending subject, which is a uh, or, or video template or form where you put yourself and it's like take a photo of yourself and then it will turn you into a female. And then the whole idea is that you shouldn't date a girl or a guy that you, that, that, that doesn't, that it doesn't give you, you know, you should lower your standards, whatever. And I realized that AI is so entertaining that so long as these people, these companies continue to provide it in, in, in an entertaining way, it will completely flood the platform, right? It's, you know, traditionally you guys know this better than anyone. AR um, was used as a form of, of, of creating attractiveness on Snapchat and Instagram, right? Filters. Mm -hmm. But I think that yeah. TikTok has taken this new approach where it's like, instead of using AI to make people, you know, attractive via filters and all that, let's use it as a form of entertainment where it can just add trends. And that's what they've done. And it's been so successful. And I think that that's what we're going to continue to see. We're going to continue to see these experiences on these video platforms being used as a form of entertainment rather as a for, rather than a form of a of of of, of like um, you know just looking good or, or tricking the viewer right i think that's a that's a really big and and mind boggling you know in my opinion mind boggling thought because that's not what anyone thinks is going to happen everyone thinks that we're going to trick everyone but i don't think that's going to happen i think it's yeah. going to be entertaining <laughs> do you have any advice before we end it all for anybody watching just final advice uh, the biggest thing when you're starting a social media page, if you want to turn it into a career, is from the get-go, have a monetization strategy. Um, you know, so many people get caught up in the dopamine of getting views and, you know, impressions, which is which is very good. It's necessary, right? But I think that what's even more important is, okay, how is this going to turn into a business? Um, and, you know, that's something that as I look back on my career, I think that I neglected. I became such an obsessed person with the views and all of that that I completely neglected this I, this this notion of like, wait, how is this going to turn into a real company? And uh, you know, as I try to you know, you know, get get gather the whole the you know everything together now and turn it into a company, I would say that uh, looking back, that's my biggest piece of advice I would recommend for somebody who is now wants to start their own you know media page or uh, more specifically. Uh, any sort of, sort of content creation, right? I know that there's this, like you guys, for example, you guys have this coffee in the beginning of this video. Uh, I don't know if Ball Sacks paid you guys, right? Ball, you know, but what I will say, <laughs> what, I, what, I, what I will say is that that is an incredible strategy where in the future, if a, comp if a coffee company does want to come and sponsor you guys, they have the opportunity, you have a great you know, a great point where the audience is expecting you to talk about a coffee and that's brilliant. And I think that that is something that everyone viewing this, this episode should recognize that that's how you should be thinking. Thank I, you so much, man. Coffee brands. You listen to what the man said. I swear Come to on. God, if we don't have a coffee sponsor from next, next episode, episode I'm going to be pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph said it, man. No, but I, I, I love what you said. Honestly, the coffee thing was just um, something because we love coffee. We were going to have coffee anyways. And then, of course, the monetization was something we thought about in a funny way. And we know if we work hard enough, eventually it will happen. But it was just... It was just something you wanted to do for fun, but I believe what you say is true. So many people go up the ladder of getting the views and everything, but then if they can't turn that into a living, then they eventually have to go back to doing something else that they don't like. So I, I, I agree with you. I think people should be considering the business side of things. Final piece of advice. Do you have any recommendation for how they can learn how to monetize? Where should they look to understand how to monetize? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a, a great YouTube channel called Colin and Samir. Um, and it really shares, it okay. talks about the, the business of being a creator. It's a podcast. In addition to that, it's, it, they are, they themselves are YouTubers, but they, their whole, their whole, the whole channel, the idea behind the channel is just covering content creators. And what they do is, is they really give you the behind the scenes behind different content creators. And they even talk about how they make money. There's even this guy named John Yushai. I forgot it, how to, I, I forgot his last name, John Yushai, yeah. Yushai. Um, and he, you know, he yeah, it's hard to pronounce. I know who you're talking about. I though. think he's yeah. an ex YouTube employee, right? Probably. Yeah, he is an ex YouTube employee and ex and, and ex yeah. Instagram employee. Yeah. Okay. And what he does is, is he gets creators on to, you know, to actually come on the uh, the uh, the show, and he brings out a pie chart and he makes them fill out how they make money, right? And then it gives you an idea of like, wait, 
I thought that this person would make money this way. I'm realizing that, that the ads are not paying this guy. He's making money in consulting or he's making money in whatever it is, right? And you start to actually get an idea of how the people who are successful are making money because right now it's, it, if you don't have that knowledge, it's kind of out in the open and you, you might go in the wrong direction. Uh, and the, the most important thing, the most important thing is to constantly have mentors. You need to have mentors. You need, if somebody is doing, if somebody is doing a good job in your niche, become friends with them and ask them, badger them with questions all the time. You need to learn from people who are successful in your niche. If you're not, then you're just, you're just going to be an egomaniac. That's going to be running in circles, thinking you're the greatest person in the world and you're going to get nowhere. You have to be humble and ask everyone questions. Fucking well person. said. That was I fucking that. well said. I, I'm, I'm glad we asked that yeah. question because I think that is going to be a super important thing for people to look at. Um, Thank you so much, Joseph. You've been thank you really. It's been great. It's been amazing. Yeah. So much information, so much insight. We loved it. Yeah, I, we, we're looking forward to have another episode. Hopefully, we'll 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 always wait for you to you know keep posting, and we'll be back again. You know, probably in a couple of months, and have another episode. See where you've been. See where we've been. Maybe Ballsax has been sponsoring us by that time. <laughs> you know, you never know what happens. But we're looking forward to see you do cooler shit, bigger shit. And um, we just love what you do. So thank you so much for everything. And I also want to say thank you to every single one of you watching today's episode. We'll be back again next week. Yes. Yeah, we'll be back again next week with another coffee brand, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys then. So have a good one. Ciao. Ciao.